Hey y'all, it's Stephen Van Camp and Lewis, and the sun has just set here on a wonderful February day. It's almost 80 degrees actually, so it's even it's a little warm even for Texas. But I figured it'd be a good time to come out and do a quick repotting video of of the seedling here. This is a seedling catacetum, and uh, I'm gonna repot it into the PET method. And I haven't done any videos like that where I, I take a, a smaller plant and show you how to do the PET method. It's really not that much different than a larger plant, but um, I figure I haven't done a PET repot on video for three years maybe. So uh, I figure it's time to do one and might as well do one with a seedling because it is the second of my plants to wake up. And it's actually a Catacetum denticulatum. So it, it's, a, it's a cool one that I got from Fred Clark this past summer. So I've had it, I guess, since August. It's February now, it's, you know, about, I'm not gonna do the math, but it's like seven or eight months that I've had it. But uh, I, I'm gonna turn the camera around and show you on the table how I'm, I'm, I'm gonna repot this. So let's, let's go quick, because I don't have much daylight left. All right, so in front of you, you see most of my tools. Um, the one thing that I'm missing is a whole poker device, but I'll, I'll show you in a sec what that is so you can get one if you don't already have one in your house. But first of all, I wanna talk about this plant real quick. As I mentioned, this is Catacetum denticulatum. This is a young one that I got from Fred Clark seven or eight months ago and it has had no water probably since November, I guess. Um, so it, it's been a while, but you can see the new growth is just starting and there's a tiny, tiny root just starting. So this is the perfect time to repot. Not when the growth is big, not when the new growth has roots coming down. This is the best time to pot. And it's not even the best time to repot uh, when the plant is sleeping because you don't know which direction the new growth will come out right so now i know that the new growth is coming here so the plant is growing towards the camera now before i even get started i want to say that i don't have to repot this you know the pet method is just one of many methods that works and as you can see fred clark uses long fiber sphagnum moss on top of uh, styrofoam peanuts as his preferred method for growing. And this is an outstanding method. This is the tried and true method that most of us who've been growing these for a long time started with. Uh, and I also wanna say that this, when you get a, a new plant from Fred Clark, you do not need to repot it. In fact, not only do you not need to repot it, you should not repot it until the next spring when this new growth is coming out. Additionally, the potting media that he uses is good for another year, at least. So I don't actually need to repot this. There's enough room in this pot that the plants could easily put out a new bulb here uh, and, and fit just fine in the pot, and the media is still just fine as it is. Um, so it could easily go another year. So don't think that you automatically have to repot when you get a plant from Fred Clark, because it's simply not true. Repotting a plant from an unknown grower or a, a grocery store or wherever makes sense as soon as you get home, but not from Fred Clark. He knows what he's doing. He's got good stuff. All right, that aside, I am going to repot because I grow all of my catacetums in the PET method. So that's why I want to get this into a new pot today, along with the other five seedlings I think that I have from him uh, that hopefully will be waking up soon. So the materials I have, of course, is the plant at an appropriate stage for repotting. The next is the PET. So PET just stands for polyethylene because most of the pots we use are made of plastic. Now I've got two here that will work just fine. These are ones that I've made for other plants and have cleaned them out with bleach and got them set up. So. I mentioned that there is one tool that I don't have in front of me, and that is an electric soldering iron. The electric soldering iron, you heat up, and then you poke it through here to create the water well. So when you water, 
water is always in the bottom here and the catechetum roots will go down into the pot uh, and just basically pull as much water as they want from here all summer long and it is an outstanding technique for massive massive plants then I also poke holes here so that I can zip tie I can include a zip tie which I have here and these are not the right size but you get you get what I mean by a zip tie you can zip tie and secure the plant in the pot and then I also add additional holes so that I can have a hanger coming off the plant and hanging these um, vertically. I find hanging is a great way to save space and it also means that the plants usually aren't falling over although large plants do tend to tip over in these so you know I've started instead of having just three holes and having sort of a, a triangle of wires sort of holding this in place. I use four now and it helps keep some of the larger plants stable. Now you notice that these pots are both different sizes. Both pots will work just fine. The pot size is really not that important. The type of media is really not that important. The type of plastic you use, you know, needs to be durable. And so this one is super hard plastic. This one is a good plastic. Maybe you don't want to use some of the, the flimsier water bottles that are, are kind of small. But regardless of what pot size you choose, um, just make sure that it's strong and can last a, a couple of years at least. Now, in the bottom of my pots, you have inorganic media. I use EpiWeb. I got a giant box of this from Ray Barkalo like six years or seven years ago when he was clearing out um, his, his backlog of them, I guess. Nobody bought them. And so he sold a box for the cost of shipping. And I'm talking about a box that's like the size of this table. Um, and I have used them ever since, and I absolutely love this stuff. There's a good chance that you cannot find it, but any inorganic substance going on the bottom, rocks are typically pretty common, lava rocks, granite, something that's uh, fairly inert and won't put stuff into the water that's going to sit down here. And then on top, you have it, an organic layer. Um, again, it's not, it's not, it doesn't really matter that much what type of media you have on top as the organic layer. You can use, uh, regular bark, but that's kind of expensive. So I use cypress mulch, which is super cheap and super easy to find here in my part of the world. If you're in the northern part of the U.S., um, this might not be available, but you might be able to find some other kind of hardwood that'll last a long time. Uh, if you're in Europe, I, I don't know what types of bark they have over there, but or, uh, orchid bark will work. Coconut choir will work. So the, the sort of big chunks that people use uh, to pot, you know, various types of orchids made of coconut will work just fine. Uh, sphagnum will work. It's kind of expensive, so that's why I don't use it. That's why I really switched over to this stuff. And that's about it, you know. Um, so So I have my materials. I have a knife here. Because I need to do a little chopping. So there's a good chance that these roots are still perfectly alive, still viable. A lot of folks think that as soon as a plant goes dormant, the roots die, but that's absolutely untrue. If I were to water this right now, what little shriveling is going on here would fatten the bulbs, uh, showing that in fact the roots are just fine. These roots are actually quite viable well into this next growing season, so I wouldn't expect these to die off until summer. That said, I'm going to cut a bunch of them off. So, that's rock hard. Um, actually, before I start cutting, I want to say that if you are just going to let let it ride and not repot your orchid from Sunset Valley orchids, you can't just water from the top once as you normally do, because this water is, it, it'll just come off. This media is totally hy hydrophobic. Uh, what you would need to do is soak this for hours. What's going to happen is you're going to put this in a bucket or a, a bowl and it's going to float on top. This is probably going to detach and just float around. Once that's sunk and is completely waterlogged, then you're good to go. Uh, and, and that is, of course, once the roots are long enough for such treatment. Um, I don't expect this one will get any water for two to three months from now. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this off. 
And then I'm going to cut probably here, and here, and here. The goal is not to remove everything, it's just to get sort of the excess off. Uh, but still leave enough to anchor this in its new pot, and I'm going to use this one. So this is what's left. This is what I'll keep. And I'll put this whole thing in the pot. Uh, this sphagnum here and these uh, the roots that are left will help anchor this in the pot and hold a little a little more steady. And these chunks of perfectly fine um, long fiber sphagnum moss will go into my compost bin and become dirt for my veggies. So the next thing is I'm going to take this, I'm going to fill it up for the most part, and then I'll put this one in. So this is roughly where I want the plant to sit. So you can see that I've got these holes close together. So I'm going to have this, the back of the plant, kind of slammed up against here so that I can add my zip tie here in a sec. And then the, the new growth, which is right here, is facing towards the middle of the pot. So I'm going to do that real quick, and then I'll probably have to get some more cypress mulch to fill in the gaps here. Alright, so this one is actually too thick, so I'm going to go with a couple of small skinny ones instead. So before I cinch this down, you'll see that I'm squishing the new growth. So I don't want to do that before you really cinch this down. Make sure you know exactly where the new growth is in relation to the zip tie so that you don't trap it under the zip tie. Additionally, there is some shriveling here, so this will probably continue to shrivel and it will, the bulb will probably still get smaller, and it might be a little loose in here, but um, that's okay. It's not a big deal. And you can see here that the zip tie is well above the new growth, and so I'll keep an eye on that to make sure that it doesn't start growing into here, and then it actually is able to grow around. So I have this here. You can see that this is a very secure plant. It's not going anywhere. It's not wiggling. I think this works. So you can see there's no major air pockets here. Might be something there. And then that kind of creates a space here that gets filled in. And same with that. So now we have the whole thing kind of sitting above the cypress mulch. So I'm going to go get some more and fill in these spaces. All right, so I've got another handful here. And I'm going to sprinkle it in the top. Fill in some of those gaps. Gently. Add the tag. And at some point, I'm going to fill this back up with my preferred fertilizer, which is uh, called Purely Organic from a gentleman in Georgia. And then, of course, I will also add regular water soluble fertilizer during the growing season. And that's it. I'm, uh, I'm pretty much out of light. So, as you can see, things are getting dark, but this is the end product. I anticipate this new one will extend quite a bit in the next couple months and then I'll start watering, I don't know, I guess towards, I don't know, I'll reevaluate in early May and see where we're at. Anyway, hope you're having a good weekend. Bye.